Qualcomm's latest offering in the mid-range segment. Now, why should we really care about that? Because this is a chip that's going to be replacing the Snapdragon 660. If you think the performance of the Realme 2 Pro or the Xiaomi Mi A2 was impressive, well, this one's going to blow your mind. Hey guys, Ash here from C4 eTech and let's talk about this chip today. If you do end up liking this video, please don't forget to turn on notifications by clicking that bell icon. And oh yeah, we've got a monthly giveaway, here's a card to it in case you missed it. Okay, a teeny bit of correction before we get started. Remember how I said the 675 was the successor to the 660? Well, not exactly. Let me explain. Qualcomm releases a ton of chips every year. Some of them don't really get used that often. Say for example, the Snapdragon 630, which was released way back in 2017. We haven't really seen it in a lot of devices, right? Others like the 625 are very popular and get used a lot more often. Thank you, Xiaomi. Now the 660 kind of got off to a rocky start. It was used only on a couple of phones like the Oppo R11 and the Xiaomi Mi Note 3, but a lot of companies have used it since then. Now the direct successor to the 660 is the Snapdragon 670. This was released in August and we haven't seen it on a lot of devices. There's, there's only one that's supposed to be sporting it. If you know which one that is, let me know in the comments below. The 675, well, it's an upgrade to that chip and I'm hoping that we're gonna see a lot of mid-range devices port this in early 2019. So why do I expect the 675 to do well? There are a few reasons. At the top of the list, you have the huge rise in popularity of titles like PUBG and Fortnite. Many companies are trying to cash in on this craze with gaming phones. Till now, we've seen only high-end flagship devices in the ga gaming category, say the Razer Phone 2 or the ROG Phone or even something like a Honor Play, it did come with a flagship chip. All of the others, they do come with a 845 and Adreno 630. But what about mid-rangers? Well, till now, the almost two-year-old Adreno 512 has been the only viable option. But all that changes with the Snapdragon 675. We have a 6-series GPU in here and Qualcomm has worked with several gaming studios to make sure that the Adreno 612 performs smoothly on popular titles. We already have games like PUBG, Honor of Kings and The Soul of Hunter on board and I expect that list to grow bigger by the time phones start coming out in early 2019. Qualcomm says that the new 612 GPU has been optimized for 90% less jank. Okay, don't know what that means, jank isn't exactly a technical term, but I'm hoping it's something that might reduce the frame stutter when you walk through smoke and PUBG. Anyway, these optimizations also include working to improve performance in major game engines like Unreal and Unity. So as far as gaming goes, the 675 looks to be an absolute powerhouse. There is one more thing of interest in here. The previous 670 has an Adreno 615 a more powerful GPU than the 612. So why did Qualcomm go backwards? Why go from a 615 to a 612 when going from a 670 to a 675? Well, the company claims that after the optimizations, the 612 edges out the 615, but there might be two other reasons at play here. The Snapdragon 670 and the 710 are both built on the 10 nanometer manufacturing node, while the 675 uses the bigger 11 nanometer manufacturing node. Now, a smaller architecture has a number of advantages. Less heat dissipation, lower power consumption, and of course, a smaller size. All of these reasons combined might have forced Qualcomm to opt for the lower powered Adreno 612 instead of 615 or 616. The other reason, well, like any other company, Qualcomm is looking to make a quick buck. And since there is no other real competition in the mid-range, GPUs on both the Kirin and MediaTek chips don't match up to their Adreno counterparts, they can pull something off like this with little to no blowback. Anyway, enough talk about the GPU. Let's see what we have on the CPU side. So there are six low-powered 1.8 GHz cores that are based on the Cortex-A55 architecture and two high-powered Cortex-A76 based cores that run at 2 GHz. So not that big of a difference from the 660 when it comes to clock speeds, but these are the new Cryo 460 cores. Wait, what? Didn't you just say Cortex and now you're talking Cryo? 
Well, let me explain. Qualcomm modifies the run-of-the-mill ARM Cortex cores to tweak their performance. So the 660 came with Cryo 260, the 670 with Cryo 360, and finally the 675, it comes with Cryo 460. In fact, this is the same Cryo 460 chips that we expect to see in the next flagship 855 or whatever they decide to call it. Yes, the clock speed and core cons might be different, but the 675 is giving us a little teaser, a little taste of what's to come. Now, when it comes to raw performance metrics, Qualcomm is claiming a 30% boost to game launching times, a 35% improvement in web browsing performance, and a 15% improvement in social media launch speeds when compared to the 670. Now, these are impressive numbers and can be attributed to the new generation of Cryo cores as well as the new L1, L2, and L3 cache configurations. Now, mobile manufacturers love gimmicks, right? The latest one, slap on as many cameras as possible on your phone. The Snapdragon 675 lets you do just that. The new Spectra 250 LISP now supports triple cameras and comes with advanced AI capabilities and support for 480 FPS slow-mo videos at 720p. Other than that, we have the usual stuff like 4K 30 FPS recording and Qualcomm also claims to have worked on their edge detection algorithms. While we are on the topic of cameras, Qualcomm has also bumped up the security on their face unlock. Wrapping up the sundries, we have the same hexagon 685 DSP as on the 670 handling all the AI duties, fast charge 4.0 support and the same X12 LTE modem for connectivity. So that was the Snapdragon 675. Today's video, you know, is a little, little bit of a move from the regular unboxings and stuff. Uh, but when I saw this processor, I was kind of intrigued and I really knew I wanted to get a video out to you guys. Sorry if it was a bit too long or a bit too technical. I tried explaining all the terms as best as I could. But if you have any doubts, as always, leave a comment down below. Uh, also, that kind of got me thinking, would you guys want to see a detailed video about all the different parts of a modern SoC? The ISP, the NPU, the GPU, the modems. What do these terms mean and why do we need them? You know, if you want to see a, a video like that, let me know in the comments below and I'm gonna try to make that happen. Also, let me know in the comments, what phones do you think would be carrying the Snapdragon 675? If you ask me, I think a lot of phone makers would go for this chip if it is affordable, since it has a lot of marketable features like support for triple cameras, gaming optimizations, advanced AI functionality, and the new Cryo 460 core design. As a buyer though, we have a lot to be excited about as well. This looks like a pretty good bump up in spec from the Snapdragon 660. So I can't wait to get my hands on a phone with it. Are you excited as well? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, it's now time I bid you adieu. Please share this video with friends and family if you can. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on what you felt about it. Also subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking that bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of our daily content. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.